This is an interview with Michael Diedrich Sr., Hampton Inn, Terrytown, New York. It is February 5th, 2003, approximately 10.40 a.m. The interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Michael David Diedrich uh, Sr. Uh, place of birth was uh, Skokie, Illinois. And your birth? 11-20-17. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering military service? A uh, high school graduate. Okay. Could you tell me um, where you were and what you, you recall of your feelings when you found out about Pearl Harbor? Well, I was in show business then. Uh, I was working out... Uh, out west, different places, different hotels and things. And then shortly after that, I got into, uh, b back to uh, Chicago, which is, Skokie was a suburb of Chicago, back in Chicago. And and uh, I was got, put in uh, 1A, so I would be called for service. And this one agent suggested I, uh, he could get me on a USO camp shows playing a, Army and Navy bases, you know, Army, Navy, and Marine places, uh, doing shows, and uh, I did that, and they put me in three, I think it was 3A or 3B, I'm not sure, which, something like that. I was in the same uh, classification as some of the single fellows that were work, working in war plants and places mm -hmm. like that, so so I was touring with the USO camp show all, all over the United States, all different places, and uh, this went on for whatever, how many months, uh, maybe close to a year, there was, now they, were, they needed more young fellows, so they were changed, they, uh, they changed, their, I was going to be changed from 1A to, from 3A to 1A. Mm -hmm. So I was with the show in, I still remember, Victoria Field in, in uh, Texas, we were playing at that show, and uh, it was an uh, Air Corps uh, base, so that's where I, I enlisted and I took a test to be, I figured if I'm going to go in, I, like a lot of guys I knew, they wanted to be a fighter pilot. So if I was going to be in service, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. So I enlisted there and had got real high marks and passed. And uh, then I went back, they said I had to go back to, I left the show and went back to the well, Chicago I'm stop area. You for a minute. Um, I'm going to take a look at your background. I, I guess we haven't never. Did anyone that uh, had been in USO shows, uh, from what years were you in USO shows prior to entering the military? Well, whatever that was, 40, uh, I went in the service 43, so that was 42. So 1942 42, to 40, yeah, to 43. Yeah, I was in the camp shows for, I think, about a year, 40, all through 42, till I enlisted. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I went back to Chicago and I had to wait three months uh, before well, they called me. What did you me. do in the USO shows? I did a marionette act. Oh, okay. Marionette act. And, I did, and then, I, matter of fact, when I got out of service, well, you, don't want, you don't want to jump well, to that probably, but I did the same thing. I went back with the USO camp show because I couldn't get a car. Wow. Um, did you uh, go around with any stars or? Oh, sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Who were some of the Especially people? when I got out, I worked with all names. Then there was a big name band. Uh, you, you name a big band, and I, I worked on the shows with all of them. And, and then, uh, then there were there were more theater dicks. Even though New York City had the Strand and the Roxy Theater, I played Radio City. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a girl working with me. Uh, then, when I got married later on, then that that girl married somebody else, and my wife worked with me. Mm -hmm. So there was two of us. So, was, so mm -hmm. we. Uh, uh, oh, you don't want to talk about. After I got out, yeah, well, I guess, don't I, you? No, I'd like you to tell, you know, um, because, because I, on, on the GI Bill, I had something to do with the Ar Army, too. On the GI Bill, when I got to New York, I I uh, decided I wanted to do some photography, too. So I went through photography school on the GI Bill for a full year because I took mm -hmm. everything, color printing and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I never, I, I didn't use the photography that much, but. By the time I got through, uh, I had to stay in New York City and just do, they call club dates, one-nighters. 
And by the time uh, the year was up, all the agents, there must have been 45, 50 agents in New York City then just, just did bank one night of the banquets and things. Mm -hmm. And by the time the year was up, I was doing, uh, working every night and doing two shows, three shows on Saturday, doubles, true. Uh -huh. <laughs> so all um, the ag agents got to know the act and it worked out real good. This where, where were you when you uh, heard about Pearl Harbor? I was working at a club in uh, Las Vegas, uh -huh. at, a, at a nightclub there. I don't remember the name of the club, but I was working at a club when Pearl Harbor happened. Uh -huh. Do you remember how everybody reacted to that? Oh, sure. I think everybody, when uh, after that, I think everybody was, uh, hey, we, we had to get Japan. We, mm -hmm. that, that was a horrible thing that... that that they pulled on us, and I think uh, anyone w uh, was really after to, to get into service and do some help somehow, you know. Um, okay, well, um, why don't you tell us then about your when you went into the military service? You were you drafted or did you enlist? No, no, I enlisted. You enlisted. Mm -hmm. And did you select the Air Corps, or were you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why don't you tell us then from you about well, your training? Well, I, I don't know. Apparently, I I enlisted, and I guess I had by enlisting, I had my choice of what to go mm -hmm. in. I, I, mm -hmm. I think that's what it was, because I definitely was going to be in the Air Corps, because mm -hmm. I went back to Chicago, and I, a friend of mine had a boat up in Wisconsin somewhere, and I went up there. My sister knew how. To reach me, and because I had on a minute's notice, I had to report to to uh, right to somewhere down in Chicago, and they put me on a on a on a train, not a not even a troop train. We had uh, the bursts because now I was in cadets, and then I went from there to uh, Miami Beach, Florida, and had basic training. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the basic training, how many weeks, six weeks or eight weeks, whatever that took. We had a nice training right on the beach. And then they took uh, like 50%, they had too many, everybody wanted to be a pilot, so they just took 50% of us and went off to, uh, uh, to gunnery school. From there we went to, uh, with a troop train all the way up to, to Harlingen, Texas. And that's where I went through uh, gunnery school, and we finished gunnery school, and we're still waiting to either uh, go then to bombardier school or navigator. And then another report come out. Apparently, they were short of, you know, everybody wanted to be a start with a pilot, but then navigator, bombardier. Uh, then they were short on gunners, so. Uh, everybody was shipped off to different places. We were, I was shipped off to uh, Pueblo, Colorado, and there I was put in a crew. There we had a crew of ten people, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, I was a gunner, and there was a well, the, the regular crew, mm -hmm. and we trained there, flew missions and practice missions and different th things together. Matter of fact, we even had. As a crew, we played football and basketball and did all kinds of things. So in Pueblo, Colorado, we were in that training with the with the ten ten men for whatever time I don't remember. It had to be uh, at least three, four months or five months. Mm -hmm. Then our crew went to uh, they flew us to Lincoln, Nebraska, and there we got a brand new B twenty four just. Rust right out of the factory, and, and uh, we were only in Lincoln, Nebraska. We flew the plane a few times, with there maybe two, only two or three or four days, and then we took off for. We flew the plane. It's a ten of us in a plane. We flew from there to uh, to uh, England. Mm -hmm. um, did you uh, keep the same crew all the way through? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. From England, they flew us to Ireland, uh, and we were in Ireland for two or three weeks for up to date uh, what, what was what was going on, what the German fighters were doing, and at that time, no, I wasn't a bombardier; I was uh, just a gunner. And they were saying how the fighter planes or the, the German planes were coming straight at the uh, from a little high. 
about straight straight at the nose, and they were all diving down and coming up at the Sperry Ball uh, gunner, because at that time we had a we had a Sperry Ball in our plane. The first B-24s, I don't think they had the Sperry, the, the lower turret that, mm -hmm. you, that you let down in the plane. Matter of fact, we all had to fly different the different positions, and I'm a little bit too tall for the for the Sperry Ball position, but I had to fly it in practice missions, and it's uh, it was terrible. We, I was the way I was cramped up in there, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when the, when the, when you let that turret down, you get the feeling like you're leaving the plane. And then when you move your sticks to, you have the two fifty calibers guns. And when you move your your title sticks to uh, to, to turn the turret to the left, you got the feeling that. It broke away from, as you go around. It, it got the feeling it broke away from the plane. You were breaking away from the airplane. You were leaving it. Did you keep the same airplane? Yes. Yeah. Was it uh, a painted B twenty four or was it? The well, little we little got over there. Our captains. Uh, uh, we we had met her in Pueblo. Her, his wife. Mm -hmm. He was a captain, the pilot, uh, not the co-pilot, the first pilot, mm -hmm. and her. Uh, first, it was Dorothy K. So when we got over there, we named it. We voted named uh, our, our plane Dorothy K. Special. So that's what we flew in all, all of the time. Did you decorate it at all? The nose art or? Well, the ground crew did. They put mm -hmm. the the you know the bombs we dropped, and mm -hmm. that was all on the thing. Did, did they paint a woman on it or just the name? No, we just had the had the name, just Dorothy K. Special. Mm -hmm. A lot of the planes had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty girls on them. Yeah. Did you decorate your jackets at all, or write the name of the plane on your jackets? No. Or anything like that? No. No, we didn't. No. Okay. What unit were you assigned to when you reached uh, Ireland? I was in the fourth, fourth, fifth, the eighth bomb group, mm -hmm. and we were in the seven fifty fourth squadron, and that was uh, the the base was called Horsham Saint Faith. And it was just out of uh, Norwich, which was about 90 miles or so north of uh, London. Mm -hmm. um, you were, where did you usually, uh, were, what was your usual assignment as gunner? Did, I know you said you moved around from different well, areas. Well, I was, but I, was I was waste gunner for 10 missions and at that time, and I was also armor gunner. I had, I was in charge of this, or checking on the loading the bombs and stuff like that but uh, uh, the, after tw after 10 missions they uh, they found that with the pattern bombing that we we're doing you know uh, uh, it was better off to have a, a hot rod uh, bombardier in the lead ship and the rest uh, of the planes in the squadron would drop on the lead ship mm -hmm. when he had bombs away mm -hmm. so uh, they moved me to uh, the, the, to the nose turret then, because I then I was I, I was a bombardier. I mean, I in a sense I I dropped the bombs, but I was what they used to call a toggleer, because I still stayed as a, as a staff sergeant. I didn't become a, an officer. Mm -hmm. Originally, uh, when your crew started, uh, there were at least an officer, the uh, navigator, and a bombardier, and a pilot and co-pilot. Mm -hmm. But uh, even if I dropped the bombs, I didn't use a bomb site or anything. I just, just uh, the lead ship dropped the bombs, and he said, as soon as he said bombs a day, way I dropped our bombs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did and you by have a bomb And by being armor gunner, one time our, two of our bombs uh, didn't come out. They hung up in a bomb bay, and that was my job too. I had to go back, and the catwalk was only about on the B-24. It was only about maybe eight or ten inches wide. It was very mm -hmm. narrow. And uh, and we had only the, the pilot and co-pilot only had back shoots. We had shoots. We had a harness where he had two snaps, mm -hmm. and he snapped the parachute on the front. And then naturally, I had to go out with the bomb bay doors open. I I put that chute on, but it made it tough for me uh, hanging on in that uh, narrow catwalk, and with a screwdriver trying to trying to get the you know the the little catches that hold held the bombs in, trying to force that to get the bombs out and. Uh, I couldn't do it, so I finally extra wired the bombs and that because we had to we had to go back. We had to land one. This was over the North Sea where we were mm -hmm. trying to uh, trying to. Uh, then the pilot and I had on the interphone, and the pilot said, "Well, I'll 
oh, hang on real tight. I'll rack it over to the right and the left. Maybe <laughs> that isn't going to help if I couldn't get him out of the screwdriver. But I hung on and he did it anyway. And then looking down, the Bombay doors are open. And all of a sudden, I don't know whether it was, whether it was a mistake by somebody or what, but all of a sudden, a, a B-24 went right underneath. It looked like it was about 10 feet below us, right <laughs> went the opposite way. Though, holy God, <laughs> we're in trouble if over the North Sea if they're going. If we're going one way, and they're going cutting across us. <laughs> so you weren't able to get the bombs loose. No, I couldn't or? get the bombs loose. So we all, we all, uh, I don't, we all, uh, in the back of the plane, uh, all, all the the gunners were in the back were and landing, and we all. Leaned against that back wall all together, you know. So, because with the pilots going in, we kept our fingers crossed. But he made a real nice, uh, very soft landing, so the bombs didn't go off. <laughs> um, how many missions did you fly? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. We flew twenty-five missions, and then uh, they sent us to a, a, a first. Uh, I understand the first. Uh, that went over the first they used to fly 25 missions that was it so you know we didn't have uh, uh, we had fighter planes and that coming at us and the wor our worst thing was uh, the flak mm -hmm. flak was horrible those the missions and, and especially our last mission usually they give you a milk run but uh, we, we had munich i think it was munich was our last run and we got our interrogation in the morning it said they got 500 flak guns and the flak was horrible but anyway, after 25 missions, I guess the doctors figured you, your, your nerves are kind of shot and you had to have a couple of weeks rest, so they, they sent us up to, uh, it's some real nice home in Scotland we went to, and I, we, we were like civilians, we went into town, they had bicycles for us, and, and they brought girls out to the place to have dancing, and, and just for a couple of weeks to just uh, forget about the, the missions, so and then we had to go back and fly the other 10. How long did it take you to fly the, the other 10 missions? Well, I was there a full year. It took a year. Because mm -hmm. that's 35 completed missions. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some Sometimes we were on, you have engine trouble or, or this or, or, or weather, what bad weather, and you go back. That, that that didn't count. It had to be a completed mission. And if you had engine trouble or something, and, and you had to go back and over to the North Sea, we'd, or, or we'd drop our bombs someplace. And then... Uh, it, it, it took uh, a year. Well, was your plane at least, ever, I, was at least hit, 11 months. Was your plane ever hit by flak? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Almost all, all the time. One time we had 260 holes, and the, the, the ground crew counted them. And some of them were, I had some holes the size of my fist. Three, three of them just uh, went through the, I thought, I was feeling around, see if I was hit. <laughs> and uh, they were just, went through the side of the plane. But we had uh, almost every t every mission we had. Was anybody injured aboard your plane? No, no, we were we were all. I guess we were really lucky. When you stop to think of some of the injuries that that they had and planes going down, but uh, I, we we just lucked out. Were you ever under attack by fighters? Oh yeah, were, sure. Were ever I I, I don't or? think we were attacked by fighters the last uh, the last ten missions. Uh, to, uh, apparently by that time we had bombed out so much of their that they were short on fuel and and uh, toward the end they even had the jets coming up. They Did you fire. ever see any of the jets? No. Um, okay. All right. After uh, you did your thirty-five missions, um, where did you go back to the states, or yes. were you discharged yeah. then? Yeah. Well, I, I I got off the plane and uh, and I I was one of them that uh, it wasn't an injury, but uh, I guess I was flak happy or whatever they that's what they used to call it from the nerves and that they took me with the ambulance right. I was in, I in the hospital. The crew left. I so I. I uh, was in the hospital, and then they were looking for stones, stones in my kidneys, and they never found any stones in my kidneys. And they finally said that it was well, you were just, uh, especially that last mission. They said you, you were expecting a milk run, and you were on a real bad mission, and and 
it was just nerves or something. So then I, I was in the hospital about, I think about, they had me, kept me there about a week, and then they released me, and then I come back. But that, I didn't, I wasn't with the other, see, now we're a nine-man crew when, the, when they had changed with the thing. Um, but any, to... Anyway, I was, uh, I, I come back uh, on the Queen Elizabeth. We helped able-bodied men, helped the, the fellows that were wounded and stretchers and whatnot. We helped load, uh, load them on. The, so we come back on the Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, uh, apparently it was that fast enough it could outrun submarines. So it's had we got escort out of out of uh, other where we left I think Scotland for a ways out and then after that uh, Queen Elizabeth was on its own. Mm -hmm. Now when were you discharged? Well then I went to I had uh, single fellows went to to their home to to their hometown of Chicago. Oh no, first I had to lay in route in Chicago, my hometown, for two two weeks I guess. Then single fellows were assigned to Santa Ana, California, and married men were, went to uh, Florida for a two weeks or two or three weeks rest. Mm -hmm. So I was out in Santa Ana, California, similar to one we had after 25 missions uh, at a real nice place where we had a lot of food and we could go in town and everything. And then I was assigned from there to uh, uh, to Chanute Field. Now, now they've Finally, well, now I could have been in special service, being in show business, all all the time. But after I flew that first mission, I said, "Oh, you crazy guy! You wanted to you wanted to be a, a flyer. I could have been in special services somewhere." Uh, so then now they sent me to Chinute Field in special services, mm -hmm. and I went up to. Uh, they gave me a staff car, and and I went to, up to my all my marionettes were at my sister's house in Skokie. And I went to Skokie and picked up the marionettes, and I did, I did shows at the base, and I uh, helped the USO cam shows when they come there, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, did you do mainly the shows in the United States, or did you go overseas in this, when you were in special services? No, special service, I just did shows at the base, yeah, at, at Chinook Field, yeah. and it wasn't that long. I was only there... Well, three, four months, six months or so, and then uh, everybody with them. My MOS was, I think, 611, which is the aerial gunner. Uh, they, uh, the Japanese, they thought the Japanese were sending uh, the parachutes or something over with the, they were starting all the forest fires somehow oh, yes. right. out, in, uh, out in the West Coast, out in Oregon and that area. There were some spots that were so back in the woods that they knew it couldn't, couldn't be set by somebody with cigarettes and something. So, so every, they were, they were, all these aerial gunners were going out to fight these forest fires. So from there, from I had to take all my marionettes and, uh, and they gave me a staff car again. I took them back up and put, put them back to my sister's house. And I had to be back to, down to catch a train that next morning. And we took a train from there to... Uh, not a plane, train, to Portland, Oregon. And then I was stationed at, uh, at a base in Portland, Oregon, fighting forest fires until, until the war ended. Matter of fact, when the war ended, uh, I was on a two-day pass in Portland, Oregon, having a good time. It was a big celebration. And then I, then I, uh, I sent a wire to uh, USO camp shows in New York City and they sent a wire back so they could ha uh, put me on a show in, in two weeks because I knew if I went back I wouldn't be able to get a car and all that. So it would be better if I went on, on the USO camp shows again. So I took that to, to the office and I had a lot of points anyway. So so he said, so he got me out right away and I and I uh, went right back to Chicago, got the marionettes, went right to New York. And well, within a few weeks I was... Uh, on a train to Frisco, and from Frisco we flew to, to our first show was in uh, Hawaii someplace. Did, uh, we did uh, bases, uh, uh, then we did shows in, uh, with that camp show. That was a six month tour. Uh, quite a bit of the time we spent in Manila, because the war had just ended, and, and there were plenty of soldiers over there. And, 
sailors and everything at, at, at different from we've worked out of Manila and, f and flew to diff different islands and at, uh, where our soldiers where our servicemen were. Did you ever run into any fellows that you knew while you were in service while you were doing that? Uh, no, no. And then, we, and then we went from there to up to uh, to uh, uh, Tokyo and we were in Tokyo for till the end of the six month tour. Uh, and then we were put on a, the six month tour ended, we were, we, the whole show was, we were put on a, it was four acts and we had three piece band and uh, we were put on a troop ship and then we did shows uh, on the way back from, from, uh, from Tokyo to uh, San Francisco, we did a show. So I went back to Chicago, and I I uh, I still couldn't get a car that was ridiculous, and I had to have a car with all the props I have because I I had a stage, and uh, I did the marionette act in black lights. I had my own black lights and everything, so you you would it looked like the marionettes were wa working all by themselves, you know, like uh, black lights. And we wore black gloves and everything, a black stage and everything. So so uh, we uh, we had a regular blackout. When, when our act went on, and just the black lights took, took what, picked what up this fluorescent material. What kind of marionette show did you put on? Was it a comedy or was it what, what kind of show? Well, mostly dancing. I had I had uh, that's how I got in show business. Uh, I won the state state champion Jitterbug championship in uh, in Florida. In my senior year in high school, I went to Nutra High School in Winnetka, Illinois. And our senior year in high school, uh, I, I teamed up with a girl who was a real great dancer, and and we were going back and then then uh, in all the jitterbug contests, they'd have them at the theaters in Chicago. And there was at that time there was like a fifty dollars, which was a lot of money, fifty dollars back then, uh, fifty and hundred dollar first prize. So we start winning first prize all wherever we went. We always first prize, first prize, first prize. I went down to Florida with my dad, <clears throat> and then oh, the, oh, then we got some sh uh, six six kids. Uh, an agent picked us up and 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 uh, put six of us together, three couples, and he had us working in fairs and that. And that's I end up why I didn't go to college, because I started do, doing all the, the shows that way. Well, anyway, somehow I remember I left uh, and I went with my dad down to Florida for some reason. And they were going to have a, a state jitterbug contest for the state championship uh, jitterbug. So I called up to this girl that lived lived in uh, Wilmette, Illinois, and she came down, and we entered in the contest, and we took first prize in that. And that's what got me started in the show business, because then the age of the we got two weeks engagement at, uh, at, the, at the National Theater in. Uh, it was like Radio City in, in Havana, Cuba, and then we had, heard, worked some uh, hotels over in Havana, Cuba, and then back, to, and then the agents started booking us up, up through Florida and all those places. That's why I ended up being in California when uh, when the war broke out, mm -hmm. '41. But uh, but anyway. Uh, so I called USO Camp Shows again. I thought, well, I wouldn't mind doing another six month tour uh, over in Europe. And I could see once what I had bombed, because you know, I dropped these bombs for for all those missions. Uh, and the last minute, and we got to New York, and the, and the last minute, or the last few days, all of a sudden they switched me around, and, I, and they put me on a, on a different show, and I ended up back in the Pacific again for another six months. <laughs> I know you said you used the GI Bill. Oh, you, you asked me a question about the, uh, you know, well, there's comedy. There was, oh, yeah. there was comedy in it too. We had a, we opened up with a mambo a dance team. There was no comedy in that, but the real nice mambo team. To, uh, and as I said, I put, I put my dancing into the marionettes. The people mm -hmm. used to tell me that. They said, your, your, your marionettes really look like they're dancing. And then we had a, a, a the comedy part would have been a skeleton. We had a skeleton, a breakaway skeleton that broke all apart and ended up all pieces would go go off. And and we had uh, we had four sailors, an ice skater, four sailors, five sailors, four sailors that I marched out and uh, and 
and then uh, she brought the other sailor out that he played a drum. Well, I mean, the orchestra did it, but the, it looked mm -hmm. like he was playing a drum and he had a trumpet and all that. Matter of fact, with the four sailors, we used to get uh, some howls when we, when we played some of the, some of the, some of the army bases. And they, they wanted to see soldiers, they didn't want to see sailors. Well, just, it was just funny, though, because we always got a great applause after. The sailors was the last number. Mm -hmm. So the other things, that they, they were big. Our marionettes, my marionettes were, were 30, 36 inches high. They were tall, big marionettes. Mm -hmm. and the Did sailors, you make your six, own? Or? Yeah, yeah. But the sailors was the last number. So the, we worked all the other things on, uh, on the stage. Uh, we had a jitterbug and all that was on the stage. And then when we finished the stage, she would pull the stage off and then I'd do the ice skater. That was out on the floor. And then after the ice skater, we closed with the sailors. How long did you do USO shows after the war? Well, we did them all the way up till uh, about 10 years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm 85 now, and uh, yeah, we did. My wife had a couple knee operations, had to put the replacement in, and she couldn't get up on the stage, so that's why we quit. So you've done USO shows up Oh, no, 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 not I'm USO. Sorry, I, I, oh, no, no, USOs, I did the tour, six month tour. I okay. did the, uh, I did like a year before I went in service, mm -hmm. when I, when I yes. well, enlisted in, in Texas, and then I did two six month tours after, and then after that it was, uh, well, then I was working with name bands and road shows and, uh, and, uh, and, Movie stars and all, all kinds of uh, things. Till I till I finally come to New York, and took the well I told you about took the photography school mm -hmm. and then then I had to stay around just to one nighters, and that worked out so well because uh, I had acts telling me for years, uh, you know, Mike, you're crazy. You're 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 working on the road for two weeks and three weeks, and then you got two weeks off and then. Two club dates. You'll make more money than you because you stay in one spot. So. Did you uh, have you ever uh, joined any um, veterans organizations at all? No, no. Do you belong to the Eighth Air Force Society or anything like no. that? At all? No. Okay. Did you ever stay in contact with anyone that you served with? Uh. Yeah, especially not our our crew, but another crew that we were very friendly with, and we were they were at, at the same uh, training uh, uh, back in, way back in Pueblo, Colorado, and uh, I see uh, I see a couple of those folks from that crew because uh, they still they have a reunion every. There's only three of them left now, and and one the one fellow uh, uh, George Howard I just saw here about six months ago. He come up and to New York and we went out and had dinner. But uh, why we never had a, 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 a reunion, I don't know, but quite a few quite a few of the crews would have a reunion every so often. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me think of any other. What do you, what do you think, um, I guess, your fondest memories of your USO shows? Do you, who you you know, maybe some big band or movie star you were with that you... No, no, was... no. The, the only... Uh, the, the, I don't know. She was pretty well known. Uh, Gypsy Markoff uh, uh, was in one of our shows. She was the star, star of the show. She played accordion, but she was in uh, a USO camp show where the plane, uh, over in Europe someplace, the plane crashed. Mm -hmm. She survived. There were... There were uh, I, I crashed on landing, and uh, she had to hurt her arm and everything. But otherwise, but she survived. And quite a few, of the, uh, several of them were, were killed in that accident. Mm -hmm. She was on one show, and uh, uh, the other show I was on with was a, a, a lady, a comic called Sybil Bowen. Uh, she was known pretty well then, but today, if you mention that name to anybody, even if you mention the name of Gypsy Markoff, I don't mm -hmm. think. You would, they would know know that name, mm -hmm. uh, and Sybil Bowen was, and she was a very, very, very funny lady, very good, and she emceed the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Gypsy Markoff didn't emcee the show. She had, uh, she had a husband. Uh, uh, he was a singer, so he emceed the show. Okay. Um, 
we had uh, uh, because it's show business. I that's a, that's where I met uh, my wife because she was in show business too. She was a singer, and we had, we had we had shows? we had six kids, mm -hmm. and they're all I put them all through uh, college, and they're all doing well. Mm -hmm. I Did got you? I got involved with some. Uh, uh, I had a very good friend. Uh, uh, that had started a trout fishing business up in in Des Plaines, Illinois, and he wanted me to do something like that in New York. So after after Dorothy and I got married, we bought a house in Westchester, and then I started looking around for property for start a trout fishing farm. That's what he had trout fishing. So I bought uh, 26 acres up in uh, Rockland County, which is north of New York City, about uh, whatever 30 miles, I guess 35 miles. And I started the trout fishing farm, same as he had. Well, that didn't go over too great. And we were busy doing shows, too. Mm -hmm. we, in summer, we'd go up to Catskill Mountains and the Boar Circuit. We'd do shows up there. And, and still doing the one-nighters, because now we had all these kids. So uh, so then I decided to put the, the, the property into a swim club, so I opened a swim club. So we had a, a membership swim club for 25 years on a property and finally closed that uh, about 10 years ago and I subdivided and and I've been building houses since yeah. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to retire <laughs> I've been building houses uh, I mean I don't build a house general mm -hmm. contractor yes, right. I put all the stuff together uh, I didn't know anything about that but uh, I had a friend who was a plumber that said Mike don't worry I'll help you and you get you started and I got a book on what to do and that and uh, matter of fact, I still have uh, two lots left to. I don't have them on a building or house though. I think they're the left, the left, finished the last one. They got a CO last summer, mm -hmm. and I think I can. Uh, I'm not just going to sell these two lots. And, well, one lot we made and keep for one of the kids, and, mm -hmm. and then our house. We have a house with an acre and a half. They're all they're acre lots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Oh, thank you're entirely you. welcome. Yeah. That's, that's interesting.